Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today it is finally time for us to review Demon X Machina, or Damon X Machina if you prefer, on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the ever wonderful Chris Scullion and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Whilst it's always a good idea to ask for help when you feel you might need it, it doesn't always benefit you in the long run. This is something that the team behind Demon X Machina may end up learning when this game releases this week. After developer Marvelous released a demo way back in February and explained that it wanted feedback on how to improve the game, a number of players instead assumed that this was a product that was close to completion, and so decided that this was a bit on the shonky side and they weren't gonna buy it. Fast forward seven months, good lord is it that long, and it's fair to say that Marvelous was absolutely right, Demon X Machina has certainly improved in numerous ways thanks to user feedback. It does throw up two questions though, exactly how much has it improved, and is it too too late to get back those that were disillusioned by the extremely early demo. We can't answer the latter, only time and the chance will tell, but at least we can confirm that the finished game is a solid piece of work, even if it isn't quite an absolutely essential one. Playing as an unnamed rookie mercenary who specializes in piloting giant mechs, your job is to take on a series of paid missions to do your bit in the war against an artificial intelligence, which turned against the human race after a colliding moon sent some strange radiation across the planet just as just like Lord of the Rings. It isn't all bad news, this radiation has also increased your own abilities, meaning your fully customizable avatar has more to offer than your typical civilian. Accompanying you on your quest are mercenaries from other factions who turn up and drop out depending on whether they fancy a piece of each mission or not. This whole idea of characters popping in and out can make it difficult to get a grasp of the plot early on, and as the storyline develops and you start getting a load of conspiracy theories and can you trust this faction? Can you trust that one? Can we even trust the company? You, you know, that typical kind of thing. It can continue to get a little bit tricky to stay on top of things. That isn't the fault of the voice acting, which is generally of high quality, or even the dialogue itself, which is well written. There are just far too many active components in play here at any one time. It's like playing chess and having the pieces swapped out for new ones every couple of turns. The fact that many cutscenes between missions simply involve different characters turning up to stand practically motionless in a room and talk to one another does nothing to help matters either. Even if what they're saying is of interest, the setup is dull as dishwater and it can be hard to keep focused. Games like this do their talking on the battlefield of course, and it's here where Demon X Machina shines for the most part. Mech games can be a bit of a slog to control, but that isn't the case here at all. Your arsenal, which is what the games call mechs, is a breeze to commandeer, and while the hefty command list can seem initially a little bit daunting, it only takes a couple of missions before you're swooping around with all the grace of a, of a 50 foot robot, but a graceful one! When you're in the air, movement is a simple case of looking in the direction you want to go and heading that way, whilst more extreme altitude changes can be controlled with either the B button to boost upwards, or clicking in the left stick to kill your jets and drop down quickly. A useful dash button assigned to R is an essential piece of kit as well, especially as your game progresses you'll find yourself in increasingly larger firing lines. When on the ground you're also able to exit your mech and run around on foot, although this is very rarely used useful. Technically, it lets you continue to get involved in the action while you wait for your partner to repair your downed mech, but you're so vulnerable in this state that it almost always results in death, at least in the early stages of the game. Combat, meanwhile, is similarly satisfying. There's a generous aim assist in play here, meaning as long as you look in the general direction of an enemy, you'll lock onto them and start firing with decent accuracy. Some of the self-appointed hardcore may object to this, but it does make sense. Many of the game's standard enemies are also airborne, and it would be a bit inaccurate if your extremely expensive, technically impressive giant mech struggled to accurately take down a basic flying foe. Also on a side note, when you start going up against other arsenals, they are quick as- they, they, they are quick little sods and you will- you will be grateful for that auto-aim because I'll be honest, 
I personally, Alex, wasn't that keen on the auto aim at first, but oh lordy do you need it. This aiming assist also goes some ways to make up the awkward feel of twin stick controls that you typically get when playing the Switch in handheld mode. Since there's no need to be absolutely spot on with your aiming, it's a lot less frustrating. You have an option to switch to motion controlled aiming should you desire, but we imagine most people will be happy enough with the standard settings, and well, you probably won't feel the need to switch over, but I still like them. If you've been put off by mech games in the past due to their apparent complexity, this is the approachable one you may have been looking for. Customization is the main order of the day here though. As well as the extensive options available to you when creating the look of both your pilot and mech, there's a wealth of weaponry that can be unlocked as you progress. Some by simply clearing the main and side missions, others by looting the wreckage of downed enemies. Whilst your mech starts off with a basic combination of assault rifle in one hand and shield in the other, before long your hangar will be stocked with swords, laser guns, sniper rifles and the like, giving you plenty of options. Naturally, you can't take all of your guns into battle with you at the end of the day, this isn't GoldenEye 007, but the game is at least generous to an extent in that regard. It's possible to enter a mission with a weapon allocated to your left arm, which is fired with a ZL button, one allocated to the right, ZR, a missile launcher on your shoulder, L, an auxiliary weapon like grenades or mines, Y, and two more spare weapons which you can attach to the pylons above you and swap out for your main ones whenever the situation requires. This means lengthy battles, and they can get very, very lengthy, especially when fighting bosses, can at least stay entertaining as you try and make the most of all the weaponry at your disposal. At its core, it's an enjoyable mech game, but Demon X Machina is not without its faults. Despite taking on user feedback and tweaking the game accordingly, elements of the game can still be pretty overwhelming, especially for beginners. Your HUD consists of no fewer than 21 elements, ranging from three different gauges to all your weapons ammo counters, to a whole array of icons showing the health of each element on your mech, head being head, body, legs, and each arm. It's just, it's just a lot to take in. The detailed options menu allows you to turn off any of these as you see fit, but they're all useful to an extent, so we can't really recommend you turn any of them off. You're just gonna have to get used to it. It also gets repetitive after a while. The majority of the game is really just a case of do a mission, get paid, watch a cutscene, do the next mission, and as the plot gets more complex and your inventory gets progressively larger, though you can sell some of it off, you do start to get the sense that it's just a rinse and repeat situation. Although there is some variation to the missions, like one minute you're defending buildings, the next you're taking on other rogue mercenaries, there's still no escaping what is really a fairly rigid structure. If you get bored of the single player, there's also the option to take part in some co-op ones, be that online or locally, with up to three other players. These are generally quite meaty little sausages. You'll be fighting giant bosses, scrapping with groups of powerful enemy mechs, that kind of thing, and they give decent cash rewards for completion, even though in the grand scheme of things, they're still more of the same sort of stuff. If you can't stand the idea of being sociable, you can also take these on solo, and as you play through the main story, you will also unlock AI partners to recruit and fight alongside you, although they're often as useful as a, an, an, AI, an AI partner. If you're still on the fence about Demon X Machina, our advice is simple. Download the free prologue demo that's currently available on the Switch eShop. This gives you the first few missions, and should you like them and decide to buy the full game, you can carry your save file over. Whilst a lot of demos are too short to really get across the full picture of a game, the fact that Demon X Machina is such a formulaic experience means that by the time you reach the end of the prologue, you'll have a pretty good good idea of how most of the rest of the game is structured. By that point, if you want more of the same, you can feel safe in the knowledge that you'll buy the full game getting exactly that. In short, Demon X Machina is a solid mech action game that controls well and gives players a generous helping of customization options. Its mission structure can get repetitive and its plot is so difficult to grasp that it may as well be soaked in grease, but as long as you're willing to put up with these and get through its initially bewildering array of gauges and icons, you should have a good time with it. Oh, it's time for my own little personal thoughts now. I haven't done these in a while because usually the reviews have covered everything I wanted to say, but uh, I just wanted to clear some stuff up with uh, Demon X Machina for my my own personal experience with it, and so I'm gonna do that in my rambly section. I think for me, I, I like Demon X Machina, and you know, the time that I've played with it, I've I've had fun. Although I must admit, I, I completely, completely and utterly switched off in regards to the plot. 
I didn't really know what was going on beyond the broad strokes. And partly that's probably because I turned off the voices because I personally did not think the uh, the voice acting was particularly good or indeed the writing very good. Overall, I, j I just feel that the plot is... The plot is the weakest point of this game and yet the game puts so much emphasis on the plot that it, it kind of, it lets it all down. I think maybe if they double down on the combat and maybe put a little bit more, you know, uh, focus into making it more varied, uh, maybe a little bit, and maybe a little bit more like Monster Hunter, where it is kind of the same thing over and over again, but there's still variation, it could have worked really well. But as it stands, it's, it's a fun game, and I'm sure there are plenty of people that will absolutely adore it. But for me, even, I, I, I play, I have fun, I put it down, and every single time I've done that, I've basically completely forgotten about it and felt no desire to go back to it, um, which is a shame. I mean, um, after, after I'm recording this, I'm going to have to get some more footage, I reckon, and I'm kind of looking forward to doing that. But at the same time, I don't really see myself playing this much in the future. Maybe a bit here and there, maybe I'll have a go with a multiplayer online if I've got some friends that want to check it out. But for me personally, it just, it just doesn't gel. It's fun, it's good, it just doesn't gel with me, which is a shame, but um, yeah, I mean, you, as, as, as uh, Chris rightly said in the uh, review, and I agree with 99% of what he said, I think the only thing would be the, uh, <laughs> the writing, really. Uh, writing is not my cup of tea. Download the demo, give it a go, and uh, you'll be able to find out whether it's a game you like. It's honestly the best way to do it, and yeah, you can't go wrong with that. It's a free demo, give it a go, see what you think. But as for me, I think I'm going to focus on Astral Chain. <laughs>